I love Goodwill Hunting. I watch it over and over on occasion. There are so many great scenes, and what Matt Damon and Ben Affleck have done in terms of writing a terrific screenplay, and Gus Van Sant's beautiful and delicate direction throughout this entire movie is something that keeps me coming back more and more. But more so than the screenplay, more so than the terrific writing, the actors. I love Robin Williams. I'm still, I still can't believe he's gone. And there's so many scenes of Robin Williams in this movie that strike a chord with me. The park bench scene is like one of the best scenes that I've seen of Robin Williams and, well, Sean and Will in the film, you know, kind of combating each other with words, make each other see each other for the first time. And Robin Williams just very sincerely very calmly bringing Will down from his, from his pedestal and making him say that like, no, you, you, you are brilliant, but you're a fucking kid. You know, have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Right. But there's one scene in the film that strikes a chord with me. It kind of capstones the entire film. And it's one scene that you probably wouldn't feel is like one of the better scenes. But to me, after rewatching it and kind of let it sink, it does mean more. Um, it's the it's not your fault scene. It's one of the last scenes before Will finally gets in his head to go after uh, his girl. What I love about this scene is that I love Robin Williams, almost maternal nature to him. He's he's very calm, soothing, comforting Will and putting his guard down and saying that it's not your fault. And he repeats, it's not your fault. And he's like, what, what why, why is this important? Like, well, he's saying the same thing over and over again, but he's saying it in a way where I'm reaching to your heart and I'm letting you know, it's not your fault. It's not your fault that you were born this way, that you were born brilliant. It's not your fault that you were born poor. It's not your fault that you were abused. He's saying these things to reach Will. And Will, at first, he's like, nah, I, I, yeah, I know. I know. I know. It's okay. I get it. And he's like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to leave this space. It, it, I'm letting you know. I'm looking at you in your eye. It's not your fault. And Will's like, I get it. <laughs> it's cool, man. I get it. I hear you. You said it already. We can move on. Like, I just want to give you a handshake, give you a hug, and we can just end this. He's like, no. And he's coming closer to him. It's not your fault. And you start to see Will like just break down. Because, and I'm just projecting and kind of assuming that like all of his life, he's felt that it is his fault. That if he wasn't brilliant, maybe his parents or maybe his foster parents, maybe his parents wouldn't have given him up. You know, maybe his foster parents. Wouldn't have beaten him. Maybe he would have had, you know, more girlfriends. Maybe he felt that he said something to a girl and, you know, it just, you know, either scared her, you know, mm -hmm. he communicated in a way and it just scared her, his affect, you know, it, he felt, he felt hindered in a way. He felt that he had to subsume his intelligence. He had to subsume, subsume himself, his, his abuse. and you notice that over the course of the story that when he finds a good thing, he finds a way to blow it up. He finds a way to wreck it because it, it's it, for somebody. It's not real. Like I can't, I can't trust a good thing. I can't believe that this thing is for me. I feel that it, this thing is for me because I'm being used. Someone's going to take something from me. Some people have been taking things from me all my life. So if I find a way to shut someone down or if I, if I find a way to end something quickly, then I'm protected, you know? I got my boys over here. They're protecting me here. You know, that's all I really need, you know, but you also find out that, you know, with Ben Affleck, and he also gives a really great speech too in the, in the film that he says like every day, the worst part of like coming to your house is like seeing you come out of your house. But I'm, I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing it, but he said, there are, there are times, the best time I, I, the best times I ever had are uh, the moments between when I get out of the car and when I walk up to the door. Of your of your home because for those brief like seconds i'm hoping that you're not there that you left that you left 
that you you got you figured it out and you got away and in some way in in a way he's telling will like you're too good to be here with us like he's already he already said like i've already resigned myself that i'm going to be laying brick for the rest of my life and there's nothing wrong with laying those who lay brick there's nothing he even says i'm not trying to like discount anybody who lays brick but i'm okay with that that's me that's who i am but for you if you're here if you're here with me 20 years from now laying brick i'm gonna fucking kill you and he says it like that i'm gonna kill you because like you have this you have this incredible gift that you can give back to the world that you could do so many great things and you're fucking around with us you're fucking because you're scared you're scared what the world he's scared to be vulnerable he's scared that like if he goes out there and he proves himself and he's not that smart or there's someone smarter than him this is just like a, another letdown and he's insulated he's protected here and to get back with Robin Williams and his scene, he's saying like, I want you to understand that it's not your fault for the way you were born. It's not your fault that these circumstances happened to you. But in a way he's saying, now that you know this, you're stronger. Now that you've, now that we talked, you're better. Now that you've let people in, you know, things are opening up for you and to see Will break down and him hug Robin Williams so tight and cry. It felt so real. It felt so real. Like he's waiting for someone to say that to him. So he's waiting for his mom to say that to him. He's waiting for his father to say that to him. He's waiting for his friends to say that to him. Someone to just say, it's not my fault. It's not your fault. And I thought that was the most beautiful. I think this is the most beautiful scene in the movie among many other beautiful scenes in the movie, but the way it was written, the way it was acted, um, it's just perfect. Like I said, I miss Robin Williams. And this scene is like, this movie is like one of my favorite movies with him. He's so, he's so calm. He's so, he's, he, he there, there are moments where he's like, you know, classic with Robin Williams, but his measure is it, so much different. It's, it's very, it's very soothing, but there's still like a rage in him. Like when he chokes Will, like that, that, that's like that was that was like a really great scene too, but yeah. Um, sorry for going over. I just want to share that because I, I really felt this was a really great scene to see, and it kind of stuck with me over the years. And I, as I watch it over and over again, um, I always pick up something new from the film. So yeah. Um, if you like what I had to say, feel free to like, share, subscribe. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you all. Uh, we are over seven hundred subscribers. I really really appreciate that. I know I've been gone a long time. I said that in the last video, um, going through, th going through some things, but I really appreciate all the love and support in the comments. Um, just please bear with me. Um, this has been a really weird, rough year for everybody, but, um, I, I will do better next year. And I really appreciate all you guys who who stuck with me this far. So yeah, that's all I got. Cabs out. <music>